Introducing Elle's favorite kind of video. Sometimes, my friends, the quiet revolutions are the ones we miss entirely. While the world debates generative AI and Silicon Valley turns its gaze inward, something is happening in Canada, something quieter, more technical, but no less radical. Billions are being mobilized, infrastructure is being built, and somewhere in the background, a country that once outsourced its digital destiny is starting to say no more. This is not just about artificial intelligence, but about sovereignty, about whether Canada will shape the future or simply import it. In this video, I want to explore what Canada is actually building, why the pace matters, and the quiet power struggle unfolding between trust, control, and global ambition. Because here is the truth. Every country says that they want ethical, sovereign AI, but very few are willing to pay for its development, and fewer still are building the infrastructure to stand on their own. Stick around, I know this video is very long, but there is a lot to cover as this is the biggest emerging technology right now that's clearly a game changer for humanity. We'll discuss the strengths and weaknesses in Canada's approach toward the end as well. So let me ask you something very quickly. If you were in charge, would you spend billion on long-term independence, knowing full well you might be years behind the tech giants? Would you build for the next generation or rent for the next quarter? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious what you'd do if you were holding the pen. Before we begin, you know that Awake, my book on critical thinking, has had amazing reviews. And you know also that I'm a computer scientist by training. I know a lot about AI, and this is the field that I actually work in. I think I have a very good understanding of both AI and how to explain these kinds of concepts to people of all kinds of backgrounds. I've had a lot of practice for it. So I decided to develop a course on AI fluency, not just how to use AI, but how to understand it in a way that is strategic, ethical, and clear. But before I actually embark upon building this thing, I want to make sure that it's exactly what you guys need. So I put together a very short quiz, like eight questions long, I think, to help guide what kind of course I create, whether it should be more focused on discussions about ethics, bias, impact, understanding what's real or hype, what it actually is, price points, flow of the course, etc. If you're even a little bit curious about AI and want to shape what this course becomes, the link is below. It only takes like a minute or two and there is a subscriber thank you waiting for you at the end. And speaking of support, a huge thank you to all of the channel members. Your support helps me make these deep dive videos possible, independent and focused on substance. If you're not a member yet and you'd like this kind of work, consider joining. There aren't any perks yet, just the knowledge that you're helping fund thoughtful content on topics that matter. There are official titles though, it's kind of mythic. Now let's get into it. In my view, the story of Canada's AI push begins with something pretty rare in policy, ambition. Not just vague ambition either, we're talking real strategic intent. Back in 2017, Canada became the first country in the world to launch a national AI strategy. That was the pan-Canadian artificial intelligence strategy, and it wasn't just about funding some cool research projects, but about building a whole ecosystem, talent, research hubs, partnerships with industry, basically creating a long-term AI environment that could grow roots. And fast forward to the present, the pace has really picked up. One of the most interesting moves, in my opinion, is the Canadian Sovereign AI Compute Strategy, a fancy way of basically saying, let's stop renting AI infrastructure from the US and build our own. This is about building domestic capacity, data centers, compute access, high performance infrastructure that's hosted on Canadian soil. So it's not just secure and private, but sovereign as well. And the government is not shy about backing this either. Public numbers show that about 2.5 billion Canadian dollars has been earmarked or at least publicly discussed to support this vision. But what strikes me the most is this, that Canada isn't saying, oh no, we're behind, we have to catch up. It's saying something much bolder. Let's build this our own way. Let's lead in research, yes, but also in ethics and trust and domestic control. And I think that's really compelling because it's not just about can we compete with Silicon Valley, but about can we create a smarter, more balanced model of AI development? Now, of course, ambition is the easy part. The hard part, as always, is execution. Can these plans actually scale? Will the infrastructure actually go live? Will adoption follow? That's where the story really starts to unfold. Here's where things get really interesting and honestly kind of inspiring. In my view, the real shift is not just that Canada is doing AI is that Canada wants to control its own AI future, and that is a huge deal because so much of today's AI, the models, the data pipelines, the cloud services, runs on infrastructure that's owned by other countries, mostly the US. So when Canada says, actually, we're going to build our own, this is a huge strategic move. It's not there to isolate, but to protect flexibility and build trust. The clearest example is something called the Sovereign AI Compute Strategy. 
It includes a whole suite of funding programs, so we're talking real money here. Up to 700 million has been set aside for things like the AI Compute Access Fund and the AI Sovereign Compute Infrastructure Program. Let me break this down very quickly. The Access Fund basically says if you're a Canadian startup or SME building AI models, especially the big data hungry kind, will help cover your computing costs. Not just a little, up to two thirds of your Canadian cloud spend could be covered with grants ranging from $100,000 to $5 million. And in my opinion, this is brilliant. It lowers the barrier to entry for small players, not just the tech giants. It spreads out innovation, and that's what keeps an ecosystem healthy. But even more importantly, this is about sovereignty. Because if your compute lives somewhere else, so does your control. Your data, your timing, your compliance, it's all in somebody else's hands and somebody else's law framework. And I think what Canada is doing here is basically saying, look, we're not chasing the hype cycle. We are playing the long game. We want infrastructure that is built in Canada, trusted in Canada, and serves Canadian needs, not somebody else's needs. To me, this is not just smart, it is necessary. And for Canadians watching, this is great news. It means more homegrown jobs, more say in what kinds of AI gets developed, less dominance by the usual handful of global hyperscalers, and honestly, more thoughtful, diverse applications of AI, not just another chatbot chasing click-throughs. In short, this isn't about fear, but about agency. And in my view, that's the most hopeful thing about this whole strategy. All right, so we've talked about the strategy, the funding, the infrastructure, the ambition, but let's move from blueprints to reality, from what's planned to what is actually happening. Because in my view, the most encouraging part of Canada's AI journey is what's already in motion. Real projects, real institutions, real industry use. Take the Vector Institute in Toronto, for example. It's one of Canada's leading AI research hubs, and it's not just academic. It partners with hospitals, banks, logistics firms, it's where cutting-edge research is actively crossing over into the real world. Or Cohere, which is a Canadian origin company building large language models, like the kind of tech behind ChatGPT, but aimed at enterprise use. They're not chasing the chatbot trend. They're focused on helping businesses use AI in targeted, valuable ways. And it's not just startups or research labs we're talking about here. Big industry players are making moves as well. Telus, for example, a major telecom company, announced that it's investing 70 billion Canadian dollars over five years in Canada, Part of that includes building two AI-focused data centers to support next-generation services. Now, to me, that's a strong signal. That's not just corporate fluff. They're actually investing in infrastructure and making serious commitments. You're also seeing the access fund I mentioned earlier actually being used. Small and medium-sized companies are applying for support so they can run compute-intensive models and commercialize them. That's the key word here, my friends, commercialize. Not just pilot projects that live and die in a lab, but actual tools and systems being deployed in the real economy and to be used by real people. And in my opinion, that's the big transition underway. Canada is shifting away from let's just do AI research, which is super fun, to let's actually use AI in real life. It is not theory only. It's not just white papers, it's application, adoption, tangible outcomes, improvement of the economy. And this is where I want to pause for a second, because for many people, when they hear AI is being deployed in real life, they get a little uneasy, and I get it. But in my view, this is not something to be afraid of. When AI is applied ethically, intentionally, and with human oversight, which is definitely the direction Canada seems to be going in, the upside is massive, my friends. We're talking smarter logistics systems that reduce waste. We're talking predictive maintenance that keeps planes and trains and wind turbines safer. We're talking AI models to help doctors catch illnesses earlier or help climate scientists model flood zones more accurately. It's not scary. It is smart, it's scalable, and it's starting to happen very slowly. Now that we've looked at how Canada is building its AI ecosystem, let's very quickly talk about what's slowing it down. Now, in my view, optimism only works if it's paired with realism, right? Canada's ambitions in AI are bold, generally impressive, but let's be honest, the rollout is still in progress. There is a difference between announcing something and embedding it deeply across an economy. One data point that stands out is business surveys suggest that many Canadian firms are still in the early stages of AI integration. Sure, there might be a few amazing pilot projects here and there, maybe a machine learning dashboard in one department, maybe an internal chatbot, but full-scale adoption across systems, that is still rare, but it's rare in all countries, to be honest. And even though the government has put serious funding on the table, some in industry are still waiting, waiting for procurement processes to become clearer, waiting for regulatory frameworks to be finished, waiting for signals that it's safe and worth it to scale, 
one article pointed out something really important. While 926 million Canadian dollars was committed in budget 2025 for AI related efforts, a large chunk of that is actually a continuation of existing programs, not brand new injections of capital. So yes, there is money. But in my opinion, some of the momentum is still being recycled and not fully reinvigorated. And this is where I think the real challenge lies. It's not about whether Canada can do this. I generally believe that it can. The question is speed. Will it happen fast enough? Will it scale broadly enough? Because while Canada is building thoughtfully, other countries, including some not known for thoughtful regulation, are moving at breakneck speed. Here are just a few of the bottlenecks still in the way, by the way. Infrastructure is expensive and very slow to build. You need land, power, cooling systems, and high-speed connections. This is not something that gets stood up in a few weekends. Data governance and regulations still need a lot of clarity, especially in sectors like healthcare, finance, or transportation. Firms want guardrails, understandably so, and until they're in place, some are very hesitant to take the leap. Organizational change is very hard. I know this firsthand. It's one thing to buy a subscription to an AI tool. It's another to retrain your teams, shift your workflows, and redesign your whole approach around it. And finally, there's massive skepticism, right? Some people are just plain unconvinced, especially when governments talk about efficiency gains from AI. They want to know where exactly that shows up. Is it the budget? Is it the headcount? Is it the outcomes? Is it GDP? What is it? Where is it? But here's the thing. Naming the problem is not pessimism. In my view, it's exactly what optimism requires, right? Because if you don't know what is slowing you down, how exactly are you supposed to move forward faster, right? This is how potential becomes progress, not through blind enthusiasm or hope, but through honest strategic momentum. And if Canada can navigate these gaps, the whole landscape shifts. So where does all of this leave Canada? In my view, to really understand the trajectory here, where this could go and what's at stake, you actually have to look at both sides of the equation, the strengths and the vulnerabilities, because no country gets it all right. And no country builds the future without any friction. So let's start with the strengths here. Canada has something a lot of countries would envy, a world-class research engine. Institutions like the Vector Institute in Toronto or Myla in Montreal aren't just academic powerhouses. They're magnets for global talent. The kind of people who don't just follow trends, but shape what the field becomes. That alone is a foundation most countries would kill for. And what is more, in my opinion, Canada is choosing a very deliberate path, one grounded in trust, ethics, and long-term data governance. It's not chasing headlines about sentient chatbots or rushing to roll out barely tested tools at national scale. Instead, it's basically asking what kind of AI should we be building and who does it serve? Now, that may not get a lot of clicks on Twitter, but it's how serious societies build durable systems. Add to that the structural investments that we've talked about, the sovereign compute strategy, the access funds, the push to spread capability beyond just a few big players. And it's clear that this is not just performative, right? It's not a press release economy. It's an actual industrial strategy. And in my opinion, one of the underappreciated advantages here is how aligned the system already is. Public policy, regional ecosystems, and private sector investments are pulling largely in the same direction, especially in Ontario, Quebec, and Alberta. That kind of coordination is very rare, and it's a huge advantage when you're trying to scale something this complex. But let's not pretend that there aren't serious headwinds here. The most obvious one, in my view, is the deployment at scale is still very modest. There is a lot of promise, lots of pilot projects, but not many examples yet of AI fully embedded across industries. Most of the heavy lifting is still ahead. And the catch is basically the research leadership doesn't automatically convert into commercial dominance, which is the main reason why I stopped being an academic. Canada may be producing some of the world's brightest minds in AI, but if those ideas don't turn into real products, services, and competitive advantages, the value slips away. That's especially risky when you look at the global context. The US, China, and the EU, they're not waiting at all. They're moving fast, scaling fast, and in some cases, cutting corners Canada wouldn't necessarily be willing to cut. And that's where the slower, more careful pace Canada has chosen could become a liability if it's not balanced by execution. And then there's the talent problem. Canada trains some of the best AI researchers in the world, but keeping them in the country, giving them the tools, the funding, and the commercial runway to build in Canada, that in San Francisco or Berlin, that's still a real challenge. And in my opinion, that's a crucial piece of the puzzle because talent without traction ends up benefiting somebody else's economy. So where does that leave things? Well, in my view, Canada is in that rare but difficult place, somewhere between being a top-tier research country and becoming a top-tier AI industrial power. And that gap, that's the real terrain Canada is navigating right now. But, and this is the important part, the architecture is there. The vision is there. The ambition is clear. 
If the funding, talent, governance, and adoption all begin to move in sync, this could be one of the most thoughtfully built AI ecosystems in the world. And that, to me, is a future worth betting on. Putting Canada in the global context is always revealing. And in my view, one of the country's biggest strengths is that it's had the luxury of a thoughtful approach, a chance to build carefully with ethics and sovereignty in mind. But the trade-off is that while Canada has been thinking, others have been sprinting. Take the US, for example, it has massive private sector investment, a deep pool of compute infrastructure and tech giants that dominate the development of large models. China, on the other hand, moves fast with state-backed support, enormous data sets and a user base that allows for rapid testing and deployment. And then there's the EU putting ethics and regulation front and center, but also moving to scale up its infrastructure and assert itself globally. In that mix, Canada is effectively saying, we'll focus on trust, we'll build domestic capacity, we'll do this responsibly. But that also means the clock is tighter because in the global race for AI relevance, caution can cost time. Still, and this is why I find it hopeful, Canada doesn't need to copy anyone. In my opinion, success here doesn't necessarily mean mimicking the US or China or the EU. It means building a distinct model of AI leadership rooted in democratic values, privacy and collaboration, but that model only works if it moves has to go from can we build to we are building and eventually we are deploying. So what are the key signals that will tell us whether Canada moves from ambition to execution? In my opinion, there are a few things to keep an eye on. Infrastructure activation, will the compute centers, the domestic data centers, the high performance hardware actually go live? Are the access funds being awarded and deployed? Then there is industrial adoption. Are more large firms embedding AI into core operations, not just pilots? Are SMEs leveraging the compute access fund to launch commercial AI products? Then there's government and regulation. Will the Artificial Intelligence and Data Act or similar regulatory frameworks become binding and wildly adopted? Clarity here reduces the risk. Global partnerships and exportability are another one. Will Canadian-built AI infrastructure and services be competitive globally and not just domestically? Talent and retention, are top researchers staying and commercializing in Canada or are they migrating? Are Canadian startups growing to scale? In my view, if these signals align, then Canadians' AI future is not something to worry about. It is something to get excited about because this doesn't have to be about aggressive takeover of every AI use case. It can just be about building smart, responsible, sovereign AI that serves people, fosters innovation and positions Canada for the long term. And I believe that's a story worth telling, one of possibility, agency, and growth, because in my opinion, AI is not scary when it's designed and deployed with purpose. The fear only comes when it's invisible, uncontrolled, and concentrated in too few hands. So the efforts underway in Canada to distribute capacity, build infrastructure, enable SMEs, and set their rules, those are exactly the levers to make AI accessible and empowering. So where does all of this leave us? It's been a huge video, sorry about that. In my view, Canada's AI story is still unfolding. The ambition is real, the research foundations are world-class, and the infrastructure is finally starting to take form. But the real question, the one that will define whether this becomes a global success story, is very simple. Can it scale? Because building AI is not just about training big models or throwing money at compute. It is fundamentally about trust, about priorities. It's about choosing how to build and for whom and what I see in Canada right now is a country trying to do this on its own terms, carefully, deliberately, but still moving. And in my opinion, that's incredibly exciting, not because it's perfect or even fast, but because it shows that there is an alternative path, one where AI is not scary, one where it's designed to serve people and not just profit, and one where countries, if they choose to, can still shape their own digital futures. If this kind of thinking resonates with you, if you want to understand how to navigate the noise, the hype, and the complexity of our current moment, I think you'd really enjoy my book. It's called Awake, The Practice of Critical Thinking in an Age of Soft Lies, and it's written for people who want to stay grounded, think clearly, and live in reality, even when the world makes that feel a little impossible. There is also a 24-minute podcast episode where some of the ideas behind Awake are unpacked in a more relaxed, conversational way, perfect if you prefer to listen while walking, driving, or just taking a break from screens. You'll find the link down below. I'd love to know what you think of it. And as always, thank you so much for being here and for thinking through these questions with me. If you like the conversation, consider subscribing for more, and don't forget to check out these other videos that I've linked here as a natural next step for a deeper dive.